Okay. We'll get started in a moment. All right, my friends, I do apologize for the delay there. Had a few, uh, a few little uh, things I needed to take care of, but we are in great shape. And praise God, we are all doing well. Hope you are as well. And I want to welcome you to this Wednesday session of voiceover in and out. I am keeping an eye on the participants. If we get some other team members in here, uh, which I assume we will in a little while, then we will certainly unmute them as well. So we are going to start today talking about some of the apps that are on our devices. Now, we already talked a little bit on Monday about the phone app just very briefly as it related to contacts. And we've been talking about the contacts app and how to enter contact cards how to properly fill out your own contact card, how to share that, um, and sort of some tips and tricks for entering contacts both for you and for other people in, in, uh, in your contacts. And we talked about how that if you use proper contact information, it really enhances the functionality of your device. And, you know, you can enter these things in two different ways. You can actually use the contacts app. You do have a contacts app on your phone, whether you think that you do or not. Uh, it may be buried in a folder, uh, either called utilities or called extras, depending on when you got your phone and, and set it up. But there is a contacts app definitely there. And then also in the phone app, um, you can you can go to the contacts tab at the bottom. And that's really the same interface. We talked about lists of contacts also known as groups, so that you could organize the contacts into different lists, and that's especially useful for email. And we're just going to go back to this phone app. You may remember that we talked a, a while ago, a couple weeks ago now already, about predictable patterns in apps and how if we can learn the fundamentals that we, we can navigate just about any app anywhere. And so uh, I told you that topic would, would come up frequently and we would revisit that. And today that is the case. I'm going to show you, now I've got my phone right here, and I'm going to show you the phone app because it's one of the most common patterns we can get used to, and it is, it is sort of the tab view or the tabbed interface. What this means is this app is set up with tabs across the bottom of the screen. In the case of the phone app, we have five tabs across the bottom, favorites, recents, contacts, keypad and voicemail. And so if I find the phone app in my dock and I open it by double tapping it, so I'll tap once to select it. Um, 28 new items. And double tap to open. Those 28 items, those are, that's a badge count. Those are calls that I have missed or voicemail messages or something that needs my attention. But we're going to open the app with a double tap. Selected phone, all button. And what we can see now is if I touch the bottom left of the screen and I start swiping right, we're gonna go through all of these different tabs that we have, okay? So if I start on the left. Tab bar, favorites, tab, one of five. And you even heard it say one of five, so you know how many there are already. Recents, tab, two of five. Selected, contacts, tab, three of five. Keypad, tab, voicemail, 20. All voicemail. right, so there you go. So those are all the tabs that we have. And what happens in an app like this is when you double tap on one of those tabs, you are selecting it, and everything above the tab bar changes to reflect whatever tab you have selected. So for example, 
I have the contacts tab selected right now. That's the third tab in that bottom row, that tab bar. And the contacts tab then is going to give me access to all of my contacts, just like we talked about, and the same thing as the contacts app. And what I do then is I touch up higher on the screen and I can double tap to select a contact. And then I can start swiping right to find the information I need or to call that person, to, to send them a message, to email them. You know, there's lots and lots of things that we can do. And one of the things that um, we can also learn about here while we're talking about the, uh, the contacts app, or excuse me, the contacts tab of the phone app, is we can learn about the section index. And again, we talked about the section index a little bit when we introduced the app library a week or so ago. And the section index is a little um, indicator, alphabetical indicator along the right hand side of the screen. And it shows the letter that is currently selected. And I said to you that a section index is a great way to, to quickly get through long alphabetical lists because you can go to any letter by simply touching the section index and then swiping up or down. So if in fact I want to demonstrate this, uh, let's, well, first of all, let's see where I am in my contacts right now because I'm not even sure. Edit mode, doc, phone, 28, phone, Regina Elder, Apple accessibilities, Apple care. All right, so I'm in the A's, I'm in the A's right now, definitely. And uh, that would be at the beginning of the of the uh, alphabet, obviously. So let's say I want to find somebody's name uh, that starts with uh, the letter M. So I'll touch the right hand side of the screen along the, the top. Section index adjustable. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. And we'll start swiping down. Cap B, cap C, cap D, cap, 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 cap J, cap, cap, cap M, there's, selected. There's the M's. Now, suppose I had gone too far. Cap, cap, o, cap P, All selected. Right. All I have to do is swipe back up. Cap O, cap N, cap M, selected. And now you can see that if I touch sort of the center of the screen. Mandy Joe, Cecily Mark, Michael Maslow. All of these names now are the M's. And, and I want to point out that some of the names, it might be hard to tell. Kimberly A. Smith. Actually, Chris McCon. It is sorting them by last name, even though what you're hearing is the first name first. So it is the last name that begins with M. But some of these are business names like Mandy Joe's Country Corral. Michael Mas Cecily Martz, Mandy Joe's Country Corral. So that one starts with an M. And there were a couple names that actually had an M for their first name as well. But if you explore this long enough, you would realize that it is indeed um, using the last name for the, uh, for the sorting. And it just displays the first name first. But also we have a couple that are displayed not by the first or the last name, but by the business name or company name. And in that case, that's what's used for the sorting then. And again, this is stuff we talked about a little bit. So that is the contacts tab. If I wanted to call one of these, um, and let me go to somebody who I know has a lot of information filled out so that you can see everything that we can do uh, with such a person. Uh, I'll use uh, an Apple user, and I'll have to see if I have their. Well, here's Trainer Cliff. I know we have all his info. Contact photo for Clifton Antonio Miller Sr. Edit button. So there's an edit button at the top right. Edit button. If we need to change anything, and at the top left is the back button. That's another part of these predictable patterns that you're going to want to remember and get used to is that oftentimes there is a back button in the upper left hand corner of the screen, not all the way up on the status bar, but just below it. iCloud, iCloud, back button. And it says back button and it says iCloud because it's taking us to the list of iCloud contacts. Now, it will usually say the name of whatever it's going to take you to, okay? Now, this, if we start swiping to the right, this is Cliff's contact. Edit the contact photo for Clifton Antonio. Cliff Dubo tech message button. Call button. Video button. Mail button. Pay button. Mobile plus pay. So right at the top of the screen, there are all of these buttons. I can easily double tap to instantly start a phone call, a FaceTime call. I can send him an email. I can send him a message and I can pay him with Apple Pay. 
And we actually can see his information. I won't let it read, but you can see that his phone number would be spoken. Mobile plus one. All right, and it would read that whole phone number. And then work mobile. A work mobile. Google Voice. FaceTime. FaceTime video call button. FaceTime audio call button. So you have all these different things. And then, you know, email addresses. But here's um FaceTime, FaceTime, FaceTime video or audio. iCloud. Click dot iCloud. There's click. his email addresses as we swipe to the right. Click dot other. Click other. Blog. H home. Eight on and lots and lots of email addresses for Cliff. And you can see web addresses. And here's what you can hear. Blog. HTTPS colon slash slash com. All right. There's stir it up with a U. So he has all his information. And if I keep going. Work. Birthday, spouse, mother, daughter, daughter. I mean, he has all this information. Blog, H -E -I cloud, back I cloud. We'll just back go back, okay? But you can see how easy it is to work with the contact and to read the information. And so that is the contacts tab of the, I, uh, of the phone app. Now, if we go back to the main list of contacts, we're also going to have that tab bar at the bottom. The rest of the tabs are pretty self-explanatory. You have... The Recents tab, which allows you to see all your incoming and outgoing recent calls. I think it's the last I checked, it stores the most, the 100 most recent. You can also filter that by incoming versus, um, or I'm sorry, you can also filter that by missed calls if you want to versus all calls. So if you only want to see the ones you missed, you can you can do that. And then there is the option to clear your recents, of course, entirely. We also have the keypad where we can easily type in a phone number if we have to. We have the, the bottom right is the voicemail. With most carriers in the United States, that's going to be random access visual voicemail. Visual voicemail meaning we can actually see or voiceover will read the name if it's available and the phone number of whoever called when they called. And um, we can actually get a readable voicemail transcript uh, and then random access, meaning we don't have to listen in sequence, like first message, second message. We can choose whichever ones we want to listen to. Of course, we can call them back. We can save the audio outside of the phone app, uh, share it with other apps and, and keep it. We can uh, delete these and, and, and all of these options. And, and as, again, as I said, most carriers in the United States do support this visual voicemail feature. Um, if your carrier happens not to, then when you choose the voicemail tab, it will just call the traditional automated voicemail system uh, the way that you've heard it before. But most carriers um, do support it. In addition to that, we, we also have one other tab we didn't uh, talk about, which is the favorites tab. When you are creating a contact or later on, if you want to, you can go back and do this. You can add people to your favorites and you can choose which number you're adding. Maybe you want to add both, but is it their home number? Is it their iPhone number? Whatever you want. And these people show up in your favorites. And it's very useful with Siri because when you, you say, call John, well, maybe you have five different Johns in your contacts. And so normally it's going to ask you, which John do you want to call? But if you have one in your favorites, it should automatically know that that's probably the one you want to call if you just say John and don't say the last name. Now, the other thing here is uh, people in your favorites list will automatically get through to you if they call you when you have a focus mode on, although you can disable that setting as well. And again, we are going to talk about focus modes a bit later. There are lots of other things we could get into about the phone app. You know, we can talk about dialing strings. We can talk about what to do while we're on a call. And for the most part, you know, what we're trying to do in this class is teach you how to learn and teach you what the possibilities are. There's no possible way we could go step by step by step through every single thing in every, you know, scenario or situation. One that I do want to talk about for a moment, though, is while you are on a call, because there are a few things I think I can tell you that I think will help you um, to navigate the, the waters there. And so the first thing I'd like to say about that is that when you are on a call, there are several things that you want to keep in mind. And by the way, you can use the two-finger double tap, the magic tap to end a call when you're on one and 
actually, if your phone rings, you can use that gesture to answer the call. If you prefer not to swipe around on the screen, uh, you can double tap with two fingers. Again, we call that the magic tap and it will answer the call. Now, one of the first things I'd like to tell you is that when you put the phone up to your ear, you're going to be hearing through that top part of the phone that's against your ear. We're going to call that the earpiece going forward. So you know what I mean by that. I don't know if that's the term Apple uses, but that's what we're going to use in this class from now on. When you hear me say earpiece, that refers to the top part of the phone that actually goes against your ear. Many of us don't even think in those terms anymore because, you know, we're not used to that. But you remember, you know, once in a, in a very, very long time ago when there used to be, you know, landlines and actual phones that you put up to your ear. Remember those days? <laughs> um, I'm kidding, of course, but you know, you did that. That's what we're thinking about. So we're calling that the earpiece and we're calling the other part the speaker. All right. For these purposes right now, they're both speakers, but that's irrelevant. So when you put the phone up to your ear, you place a call that's going to be in the earpiece. And there is a, um, well, there's actually a lot of sensors in your iPhone ambient light sensors, proximity sensors, um, gyroscopes, um, you know, all these kinds of different things that help the phone to do what it does, accelerometers. And so these are very useful for a variety of reasons. Now, one of the reasons that the proximity sensor and the ambient light sensor are so useful in the phone calls is because they sense when the phone is against your ear. And what they do is they disable the screen so that you don't accidentally push an, uh, you know, an errant button press and suddenly hang up on somebody or, you know, something like that. And so while you have that phone up to your ear, your face is against it. It's not, the screen is completely disabled. And the only way to get that screen working again is to pull the phone away from your ear. And the reason I'm pointing this out with such deliberate intent here is because I have gotten the question actually quite a few times of, well, when I'm done with a call and I do the two finger double tap, it doesn't work. Why? I have to do it two or three times. Well, that's exactly why. Because what needs to happen is the phone needs to be very clear about the fact that you've pulled the phone away from your, your body. And there needs to be a, a little moment for the screen to sort of come alive. So what I encourage you to do if you need to use the screen is to be very deliberate about pulling the phone away from your ear and, and moving its position. I mean, you don't need to shake it or do anything aggressive or crazy, but just make sure it's a clear motion where you're pulling it and then tilting it so it's not in that same up against your ear position, but you kind of lay it a little more flat, just a tilt even a little bit. And then also I would wait I don't even think it needs to be two or three seconds, but at least a second, like a one second wait before you start touching the screen, because you'll know that it's then uh, ready to go and ready to accept user input. And you can do that magic tap, two finger double tap or whatever it is you want to do. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about while we're in a phone call. The second thing that I want to talk about is what is actually active when we're in the phone call. And this is a bit advanced. This is probably more appropriate for our uh, you know, our veteran um, students here rather than for brand new folks, but I, I think everybody will be able to grasp it. And it is important to understand. We've talked only a very, very little bit about the app switcher. I told you, you could use the app switcher to quickly switch between open apps. You can also use the app switcher to force quit running apps, although we don't encourage that and neither does Apple. Um, it's not recommended, and the only time it is ever recommended is if an app is not performing properly. Then and only then do we want to force quit our apps. And the reason for that is because we're actually doing more by having to reopen an app later that we have forced quit. Uh, when when we leave the app, sort of do its own thing, iOS is absolutely excellent. I mean, the best in the industry at managing memory. And so it knows where the apps need to go when they need to go into a uh, just a running in the background state, when they need to go into a truly suspended state, when they need to leave the app switcher altogether. The, you know, iOS, iPad OS, they manage that beautifully. And so you are better off by just leaving well enough alone when you start force closing apps. Now what happens is you're removing them from memory. So the next time you want to use them, it, they have to redraw to get back to everything that you were doing where you were. And that takes more battery and uses more processing power. So they don't slow your phone down by leaving them in the app switcher. Nothing like that. I, I could not even tell you. Like I had, there were people saying, 
Well, when I go to the farthest end of the app switcher, then this happens. I, I couldn't even tell you the farthest end of my app switcher. I haven't been there in ages. I could. I have no clue how many apps are in my app switcher, and it makes no difference. Absolutely none. All right, so don't force close your apps unless there is an app that's not performing properly. It is glitching. It's doing something you don't expect. Then at that point, it is a tremendously excellent troubleshooting step to force quit that app. And there are some apps that seem to just be prone to when you open them, they don't refresh properly. Even if you have the background app refresh on, even if you try to manually refresh them, they just don't. And so then you have to force quit them and relaunch them, you know, on a bit more of a regular basis. But that's kind of on a case by case, right? Not not all your apps. So anyway, I brought up the app switcher and that's why we haven't talked a tremendous amount about it because you really don't need it other than to quickly switch to previously open apps if you want to. But the reason I'm pointing it out right now is because sometimes what we want to do is while we're on a phone call, we want to use another app. We want to um, look something up for someone in Safari or we want to do this or that, you know, and then we want to return to the phone call controls just because we like to do that or maybe we need to. And so what, what do we do? We go to the app switcher and what do we look for? We're going to look for the phone app, right? No, actually, we're not. So there are two parts to the phone call, there is the phone app, which you may or may not have used to initiate the call. You say, well, what are you talking about? You may or may not have. How else would you place the call? Well, there's a lot of ways. You might have placed the call using Siri. You might never have opened the phone app. You might have placed the call from Safari on a website. There might be a, a phone number and you double tap on that phone number and it places the call. The TTJ website does it that way. We, we have a call um, on our main homepage. If you go there, it says, uh, call a, a by phone and then there's a link and that link actually doesn't even display the phone number until you click it and then it gives you the option to call it so right from your iphone you might initiate the phone call using uh safari or somebody might have called you in all of these cases you did not open the phone app to start the phone call the phone app is only used as a vehicle to place the call but when the call actually begins it doesn't use the phone app it uses something called the in-call service. This is a, a, a sort of a framework. Don't worry about all these million dollar terms, but it's a framework that's running in the background, displaying the call controls and keeping the call active. It's the in-call service. It is not the phone app. And so consequently, when you are on a phone call and you leave that in-call service and you go to Safari or you go to messages or you do whatever else it is that you are doing while you're on the call with the person. If you want to get back to the proper call controls, you, you use the app switcher and you don't choose the phone app. You either, it will either say in-call service or it will say uh, in more recent versions, it, it seems to be a bit more uh, human. And it says something like uh, phone call with Melanie or, you know, phone call with 310-222, whatever, you know, so it's going to tell you that. And that's what you want to double tap on. And by the way, it's usually at the farthest, the farthest right end, the most recent end of your app switcher. It's the very last thing or the very first thing, I guess, really, depending on how you look at it, swipe to the right. And so you bring that up and you're back in your call controls now. Uh, a lot of people notice this in Zoom and, and they mistakenly do it in Zoom. And because Zoom uses the same framework for its Zoom meetings. So when you're on a Zoom meeting, it's the in-call service that's actually running in the background. This is why doing a two-finger double tap may not mute your audio in Zoom because really uh, it was designed to do that in Zoom originally. But when the Zoom app developers decided to go with the in-call service, then that two-finger double tap really is the hang up your phone call gesture. So they kind of can conflict. And it was a wonderful thing, in my opinion, that Zoom decided to use the in-call service API because it is, um, why reinvent the wheel? You know, it does provide everything that we could ever need for our Zoom meetings. And so it really is a, a good thing. A lot of apps do that. Um, not all, but not all, you know, VoIP and, and calling apps do, but a lot of them do. And usually the ones that do work better than the ones that don't. Um, so your, your in-call um, service is the thing that if you want to go back to the call controls, you do that. In Zoom, that's not going to be what you want to do because in Zoom, you want to have access to all the Zoom controls to start or stop your video, to share content, you know, to do all these things. And so a lot of people make that mistake and they see 
Uh, well, well, let me actually tell you what it says. I can go here. Let's see. If I go to my app switcher, it says, what does it say? Okay. It says call with Zoom meeting active. That's actually not the one I want because if I do, it's going to look very weird. It's going to work. It's going to give me some call controls, but not the full Zoom interface. So I want to go to the left and pick Zoom. And that is the one I want here. But in the case of a phone call, you actually want the um, the in-call controls, not the, not the app itself. So that is a little tidbit that I think might be very helpful to some people to understand that. The other one was about the proximity sensor and the uh, keeping your face against the glass, uh, those kinds of things. And then we're going to talk about how to actually now interact with the call controls while you're on a call if you need to do that. And this can this I know makes some people nervous because you are hearing the person talking and at the same time you're hearing voiceover or maybe you're trying to use an IVR, you know, thank you for calling. Press one for English, you know, and, and how do I do that and all of these things. So let's talk about what we actually have available to us and sort of how to work with it while we're on a call. When we pull that phone away from our faces and we give it a second or two for the screen to wake up, we can start swiping and near the top we can hear the, the call that we're on and the amount of time that call has been in progress. And if we keep swiping to the right, we're going to find the on-screen telephone keypad. That is not the default for non-voiceover users, but if you're a voiceover user, it actually defaults to the keypad to sort of make it a little bit quicker maybe for you to get to the button presses and so forth. Um, the other thing that happens by default is that when you pull the phone away from your ear, it automatically switches you to speaker. And remember I said for the duration of this class, when I say speaker, we're talking about the bottom part of the phone. Where when, we're, when we say earpiece, we're talking about the top. It automatically switches you to speakerphone. I don't like that feature. I never have. It's not a criticism. It's just I. it doesn't tend to be great for me. Um, because if I'm moving around, for example, or let's say I'm on the phone and I'm carrying groceries in or I'm doing this or that, sometimes the phone will get jostled and it will keep switching back and forth between earpiece and speaker. Um, this is only for voiceover users, by the way. It's designed to make life easier so that if you want to switch to speaker, you can simply pull the phone away. And I suppose it does have that effect for those who are not comfortable with the screen. But the problem is if it's constantly switching back and forth, if you're moving around and stuff a lot, you're going to miss things on the phone call, right? Because automatically it, you know, it, it's constantly going back and forth. And so you're hearing it being interrupted and you have, uh, it, uh, I, uh, you know, like that. Okay. Well, that's um, easy to fix. And the way we fix that is, through, well, it may not be something you want to fix. Maybe you like it that way. And so you leave it alone. But if you don't want to keep it that way, uh, you can go into settings and um, accessibility and then voiceover and then audio. And you can choose the, there's an option in there that says auto select speaker in call. You can simply turn it off. Just double tap it to turn it off. Again, I'm not telling you to do that. Um, remember we said early on, there are no settings that have to be a certain way for voiceover to work. I'm just saying this is a strong personal preference of mine to turn that off. And you may want to also, if you find that to be, uh, challenging for you to, that it's, you know, constantly switching back and forth. Some people really like it because they're not comfortable with the on-screen controls and they want to be able to quickly switch to speaker at, at, at will. So your choice. Okay. But I wanted you to know you had the option. So right now, by default, you pull that phone away, it's probably going to switch to speaker. And then what you have is now, as I said, we have the keypad on screen. We also have an end button. If we keep going down to the right of the star zero and, and number pound sign, we have an end call button. And then we have this hide button to hide the keypad. And the reason we'd want to do that is to get other call controls. For example, the mute button. On screen, we have a, a way we can quickly mute our phone call. Uh, and we can long press it to get hold, uh, which means both parties are, are on hold, okay? Uh, we can, um, uh, at least we used to be able to do that. I haven't tried that in a long time. Um, what else can we do down there with when the keypad's not showing? Well, we can show the keypad again. There's a keypad button. Um, there's the audio button, and it may just say speaker, okay? But that's the other way to do it if it's not auto-selecting, um, is to 
double tap that. Now, it may say speaker, it may say audio, and that depends on how many audio sources are available. So if you're out and about and you're just on LTE or 5G, you're not you know, near any other Bluetooth devices and Wi-Fi devices and so forth, you're only going to have speaker or not speaker, right? You just select it or deselect it. But if you are on your Wi-Fi network at home, maybe you've got a bunch of home pods and other airplay devices, and you've got some Bluetooth devices nearby in, you know, or you're in the car and you, you know, you have your car uh, audio infotainment system and Bluetooth and over the, you know, all of these different choices. So it's lumped under the convenient term of audio. And when you double tap it, then instead of being a toggle, it's going to be a, a menu, basically a pop-up menu of options. Which one do I want? Do I want speaker? Do I want iPhone, which is the earpiece? Do I want, you know, uh, the car audio? Do I want the living room home pod, the kitchen? You know, what do I want? And where do I want to talk to the person? So it becomes audio when there are multiple choices available, more than just two. And I was wrong. It do, I think it does say, well, no, I don't think it's a menu when it's just one. I think you still have to select or deselect. It might be a menu. It might say iPhone or speaker. Now I forget because usually I have multiple devices available. Sorry about that, but it's it's one or the other. Um, okay, so those that's another thing available in your call control. Speaker, mute keypad um, uh, or audio mute keypad. Another thing we have there then is we have an add call button. Now this is useful. And uh, when we want to do a conference call, like a three-way call, or we can have more than three, um, we hit the add call button. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to bring up the regular phone interface, favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, so that we can place the call that we want to place. Once we place it, we're now talking to the new person, person two that we've added. Now what we'll find on the screen, we may or may not have to hide the keypad again, but what we'll find on the screen now is we have a swap button, which allows us to go back and forth between one person and the other. And we also have a merge calls button, which brings them all together. And so that is how we make a conference call, a three-way call or more. That swap button is also useful when you have a call waiting. If you have, you're on a call and a second call comes in, you'll be able to look on the screen. Here's what I don't want you to do. Uh, when you get a call and it comes in, you hear the beep while you're on the phone, right? And you hear the beep. Don't do the magic tap, all right? Because you might end up disconnecting instead of doing what you want to do. Instead, touch the screen and choose hold and accept, end and accept, or I think it says ignore or something like that. Uh, it may say send to voicemail. I don't even remember, but hold and accept or end and accept are the two most common ones that write. So hold meaning just hang on guys. I got another call. I'll be right back. And you, you know, you do that End and accept means, look, I know I need to talk to this person a while. I got to go. I'll call you back later. Bye-bye. So then you hit end and accept, uh, or you just, you know, you can ignore it and it'll go to voicemail. Um, when you're on another call and you have kept the first person on hold by choosing the hold and accept option. Again, you're going to see that swap button. And so you're going to have the ability to quickly swap between the two calls. And then the other thing I would point out is when you're done with the second person, if you still have the first person on hold, just swap. Don't try to end the call or anything. Cause again, you might end up hanging on both hanging up on both people. If you're not really careful of what you're doing there. Uh, I've done it sometimes without meaning to, and, and, you, you know, just, just swap back to the first person, the second person will hang up. And if they don't, they're not going to hear your other call. They're just, you know, going to sit there in silence. And I guess that's their own choice. Uh, <laughs> so that's, uh, a bit about the in-call, um, controls. And I'm trying to think if I've missed anything really important, I can't think of anything at the moment. Um, but it is, uh, you know, um, we will take questions here later on about that. So the majority of this is the phone app. And then we talked about the in-call controls. But if I go back to the phone app, you'll remember that it's a tabbed app. It's set up with tabs. And so it's uh, a very common type of app that we will be exploring a lot of apps that look like that. Another app right off the bat that looks like that, that's set up with tabs, is the Clock app. Another great app to sort of just 
get our feet wet. And let's take a look at it now. All right. So settings, weather, average, four notes, reminder, weather, maps, clock, 2.43 p.m. Double tap to open. There's my um, clock app, and it announces the current time, and I double tap to open. Clock, edit, button. All right. Uh, we should have several tabs here. We have um, the world clock, the alarms, the timer, and the stopwatch. If I touch, if I touch the bottom left. Tab bar, world clock, tab, one of four, selected, alarm, stopwatch, timer, tab, four of four. All right. And again, I won't go too extensively into these because, uh, you know, uh, this is more about you learning how to learn and exploring what the possibilities are. Um, so for the sake of time, we're not going to teach you step by step how to use all those. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you know your, your left and right swipe, your tap, your double tap, and of course, even your up and down swipe, if you get to pickers, because you will have pickers, for example, when you're setting an alarm. How do I set the hour and the minute? You know, you can use a picker to do that. Swipe up and down with one finger. And it's using the value adjust option in the rotor automatically there. But, um, you know, just to give you a little background here, uh, World Clock is going to allow us to see our current location as well as whatever else we may add to it. If I want to know what time it is in California, I think they always have Cupertino in there by default anyway, because that's where Apple's headquartered. So, I think the Pacific time zone is in there. Um, you can add others. Um, maybe I'm traveling to Paris and I want to, you know, keep track of that. And so I can put that in the world clock. Um, you can edit these things. Um, alarm, of course, very, very self-explanatory. We can set multiple alarms. We can choose the sound uh, for each alarm. Um, we can even choose music from our music library, but we can also choose our ringtones and, you know, things of that nature. And when we set it up, do we want to allow snoozing? Um, do we want to name the alarm so we can give it a custom name? Um, we can have automatically repeating alarms. We can set what days of the week they repeat. And obviously we can set the time of the alarm, right? And we can have as many as we want, turn them on and off. Um, there is a separate wake up alarm that's part of the sleep feature and it is sort of a combination of the um of the clock app and the health app and so you actually set that up in health in conjunction with a bedtime and so you can get wind downs and bedtime reminders and tell it how many hours of sleep you want. And then that gives you a whole different set of unique wake up sounds to choose from that slowly build up. And, and it also puts on the sleep mode uh, when you're, you know, supposedly sleeping and these kinds of things. And so it is a really, really awesome feature, but you don't initially set that up in the clock app. You can sort of manage it a little bit in at least parts of it in the, in the, um, clock app like for example if you have a certain alarm and you know it doesn't apply tomorrow you know uh for example here's a great case you know my wife and kids all have school my wife is a teacher and my kids are in school of course and you know maybe it's summertime or maybe it's christmas vacation or a, a snow day we know school is canceled tomorrow because there's a blizzard you know or an in-service day whatever and you know that they don't need to get up as early tomorrow so we say guys you know turn off your your wake-up alarm well, they don't have to totally disable that and then set it up anew after tomorrow. All they need to do is go into the clock app and in the alarm tab at the very top, it shows the sleep time and the, the wake up alarm and you can edit it there. You can choose to skip. What you do is you just turn it off. And then when you hit done, it says, do you want to make this change for tomorrow only or, or for the next alarm only or, you know, for every instance? And so you say just for the next one only. And then it does that. And so you can do that. Now, I guess summer, that would not be really a good thing. Summer, you'd probably want to do it indefinitely and then change it back when school starts again. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to remember to do that every day. But you can um, yeah, you can definitely make those sleep schedules and wake-up schedules in the health app. And then you know some of that syncs to the clock app and can be managed there. The other thing about those sleep and wake-up is that they can be different for each day of the week. So I have a certain time that I get up. Monday through really Saturday, I guess. 
Um, and then on Sundays we have church, so that's different. So I have one for Sunday and I have one for the other six days of the week. So that's the health app, which we'll probably get into a little bit later on in the course. Uh, but that is a nice feature that I would encourage you to make use of for your regular alarm. But I also have other alarms set to make sure that I'm up. And sometimes they're specific. I have different schedules each day, so it just depends. But, you know, you can kind of do most of that in the clock app then. Um, so that's the alarm tab with a, a, a little bit of the uh, health app sprinkled in there for your information. Um, the timer, again, pretty obvious, pretty self-explanatory. And we can set these timers. Um, so we can repeat them. We can use Siri to set alarms. We can use Siri to set timers, right? Now, on the home pods and on the Apple Watch, we can actually have multiple simultaneous timers and we can name them. So maybe I have a pizza timer or a chicken timer for my meal that I'm cooking. Now, maybe I have three or four dishes that I'm making at the same time and they all have different timers, you know, think Thanksgiving preparation. Or maybe I have a food timer and a laundry timer. I've got the wash going, you know. And so you can name these with the HomePod and with the Apple Watch, and you can have multiple ones going. Um, but even on the phone, it's a useful feature, a timer. You can choose the sound, and you can choose the, um, you know, the duration and everything. And you can even set a sleep timer, because one of the options, if you go into the timer, is uh, when timer ends, what does it do? And it can, you know pick from your ver a variety of your tones and so forth, but then there's also a sleep option. So this is very useful if maybe you're um, reading an audio book before bed or listening to music or something, you can have it sleep uh, that for you automatically after a certain amount of time. Uh, that's how you can set a sleep timer. So those are great and that's very useful. And then of course the stopwatch and you can display it as an analog or digital stopwatch and you can have laps and you can have, you know, the total times and everything you'd expect. Again, I would just encourage you to explore it. But the reason I brought it up is because it's a great app to sort of play with as you're getting started into things. And it is indeed a tabbed app, right? Remember, we have those four tabs at the bottom. So that is why I brought it up now, because it fits nicely into that predictable pattern. The next app we're going to look at is not going to be that way. So we wanted to make sure that we explored that a bit. Now, you know the next app we're going to look at, and I don't know whether we'll get into it today or whether we'll wait till Monday because we have to see how many questions we get. Uh, I don't want to sort of start and, and rush or you know anything like that, uh, but it's going to be the Messages app, and we're really going to hit that hard. Um, even there, we're not going to teach you everything step by step because that would just be ridiculous, but we are going to teach you some of it because we believe it's a very important app. Apple says it's one of the most used apps, and I believe that. And also, there's a lot to it. So we are going to spend some time with it, and for, I think, good reason. Um, but it is not a tabbed app. It's it's kind of a, a list app, uh, uh, which then when you go into the conversation, it, it you know has even another interface. It does have a back button at the top left, so you will be used to that. Um but we'll get there. All right. So back to the clock for a second. I mentioned that you can use Siri and, and that's a great way to do it. So, you know, one of the nicest things about Siri is that it's natural language, you know, so you could tell Siri, set an alarm for 10 a.m. Or you could say, wake me up at 9, 15 a.m. You know, you can use different um, phrases there. Um, when you are using when you have a HomePod or HomePod Mini, um, it is wonderful because you can stop your alarm, even if the alarm is not on the HomePod, if it's on any device that's nearby and signed into the same Apple ID. And so, for example, if my iPad or my iPhone um, rings, I don't have to reach over and, you know, I can simply tell. Siri on the uh, on the HomePod, stop the alarm. And uh, some people say that you could actually say the device name, like stop Matthew's iPhone, uh, whatever, um, you know, stop iPhone or stop Matthew's iPhone. I don't even find that to be necessary. Um, usually I'll just say stop or stop the alarm. And what she'll do is sometimes she'll ask me, she'll say, you know, stop. And, and here's another example. My son one time uh, left his phone in the living room, but he was back in his bed and the alarm went off and 
he had forgotten to turn it off over the summer. So I said, stop the alarm. And it said, stop the alarm on Carson's iPad or iPhone, whatever. And I said, yes. And it did that. And sometimes it won't even ask. Sometimes it'll just say, I stopped a device nearby. So this is a really, really cool feature. And uh, just, I think, a fantastic example of the beautiful integration of hardware, software, and services that Apple devices provide, um, that Apple provides, really, because it is, I mean, it's, it's just it just works. So um, HomePod is a great, great device just to sort of add on to things. You know, um, I do also have other assistant devices. I have Google Nest devices and I have Amazon devices. I, I like them all. And I think every one of them, by the way, I know this isn't the topic for today, but a uh, slight rabbit trail. Uh, I think every one of them has strengths and, you know, areas that I, I don't even want to say weaknesses. That's too negative And it's really not an accurate assessment, but every one of them, at least let's say has strengths where they really shine and I couldn't do everything that I can currently do with my voice if I didn't have all three of those types of devices, right? Each one of them enables something just slightly different. Apple's biggest strengths here are how well it integrates with everything that you have. Also, Siri does really do a good job on the HomePod, and it is by far the best sounding device when you're playing music. I can use it with my Apple TV as, as TV speakers. So it's a, you know, they're, they're great to have. And I, I mentioned that only now, only because we're talking about stopping alarms and, and things of that nature and timers and all that. But that is a, uh, that is a bit about the, um, the clock app and, and the phone app and, uh, the, predictable patterns that you can see in those and that you will be able to see in other apps as well. We definitely have other tabbed apps. I'm assuming somebody must be walking their dog outside and our dog is just going crazy about that. Um, that usually happens about this time of day. You'll notice that predictable pattern as well. That's another one. So uh, what I'm going to do folks now is uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to just mention uh, a couple things here and then we are going to take a quick stretch break i'm going to see if the other trainers have come in in fact let me check first if the other trainers have come in because if any of them have i'd love to get their input on the phone and the clock and the predictable patterns first all right let's take a look we've got a great crowd here praise god let's see if our I know a couple of them had other appointments and couldn't come in until a little bit later. And I suspect it's not quite late enough yet for them to come in. But let's just check anyway. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. So they'll probably come in a little bit after three, I would say, probably uh, three Eastern. Um, so, you know, uh, there are going to be other apps that have that tabbed interface as well. As we get further on, you will see them. Um, the the calendar sort of does uh it it it's it's a little bit it, it sort of does we'll just leave it at that um and uh let me think um what else uh not mail and messages not settings um you know uh but um not and, and not reminders right uh, but some of the other apps that we will uh, continue to explore the news app, the Apple news app, uh, the TV and music apps. They, they have uh, tab views. So you'll kind of see that uh, as we go. And it's uh, just an important thing to uh, keep in mind. All right, guys, what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to pause the recording and we're going to just, just take a, a short little um, stretch break uh, in a moment and uh, you can, uh, you can, you know, get a drink, get a snack, get your questions ready. Uh, we're going to take some questions. Um, just want to make sure that I've kind of covered everything before we do that, uh, that I wanted to cover. And then we'll see what happens if we get, you know, a lot of questions. Maybe we'll, we'll wait for Monday for messages. Maybe we'll start messages today. Um, but it'll definitely be the next thing on the agenda, whether it's today or Monday. And, um, 
you know, other than that, guys, I hope that the phone app and the clock app are now a little bit clearer to you. Uh, we did talk briefly um, about the dialing strings on on Monday, but uh, I know that we didn't get tremendously deep into them. That's kind of that's kind of deliberate because they are, you know, they can be a bit challenging dialing strings. Again, just in case the, the language isn't clear, a dialing string is like, I need to call this phone number and then I need to press one and enter an extension or, you know, whatever. And I can create an automatic, you know, a, a dialing string where that happens. I include all that in it. Um, the, the reason that they can be a, a problem is because a lot of times the IVR will change uh, the prompts over time, you know, so you have to really make sure that it's correct. Uh, but you can do this in your contacts. You can enter those in as well. And that's another nice thing that the phone app does um, does offer for you as well. So let's go ahead. Let's take a little break. It's it's uh, three Eastern on the dot right now. And so um, what that indicates to me is that probably some other trainers will come in as well uh, while we're on this break. I'm going to I'm going to pause the recording now. working like a dog and my dog i'm mm, i don't know i guess she works pretty hard when she's tugging a toy or you know trying to shred something um let me check and see if we have other <laughs> team members now and welcome back everybody by the way welcome back let's see Yep, Sarah's here. Trainer Sarah, let's see if we got anybody else yet. Not yet. All right, well, hope you enjoyed the little break there. Maybe you got a chance to get a, a drink or a snack. Hope you enjoyed the music, and we're going to say hello to Sarah when she gets unmuted. How you doing, Sarah? Well, she'll get there. I'm here. I'm here. There you are. There you are. How you doing? I'm good. I, I got stuck in looking who was on the phone who was on the, oh, oh, the call no problem no problem um we finally covered the the phone app and the clock app and i said we'll we'll see how many questions we get before we start messages i may wait till monday for that because we don't want to rush that but we'll see if we don't get a lot of questions but um do you have any comments you know we, we kind of went over the fact that the phone and the clock both are uh predictable patterns they both have the tabbed layout you know the tabs across the bottom and yeah. we also uh, did give the folks some tips on using in-call controls to swap calls to add a call to mute their you know their audio uh you know those kinds of things uh because we think that a lot of times uh that sort of overwhelms people if they have to deal with it uh without knowing so uh, that's kind of, uh, do you have any comments or anything to, you know, to say about those things? Um, well, without having been here for the last hour, um, one of the things that I find incredibly helpful is that you can go to the app switcher when you're on the phone. And for instance, that's what I was doing this morning is I had to, I was buying something on the phone and I had to, you know, I, I, she was on the phone and I just went to app switcher, went to contacts, went to, you know, different areas, um, Apple pay, you know, wallet and Apple pay and all that kind of stuff. So I could actually switch back through wherever it is that I needed to get information and, you know, addresses, et cetera, et cetera. And it does not hang you up. I mean, it can, I guess, 
but in general, it used to be a little bit more finicky. And now it just is almost, it almost never fails for me. Right. That's exactly. Just, yeah. Um, it's, uh, yep. No, I agree. I agree. Very good. Very good tip. Absolutely. And all of the, all of the recent uh, devices and, and, you know, all the carriers now you can use, even if you're not on Wi-Fi, even if you're traveling or something, you can use cellular um, data and phone uh, calls at the same time. So it's, it's very useful. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's great. And we just saw trainer Lynn come in also. So I will unmute her. Let's see. Um, all right. Uh, question mark. All right, guys, uh, we got trainer Lynn. Uh, how you doing, Lynn? Hello? Hi. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Sorry, I had to work. How are no problem. Uh, yeah, it's great. Great to be back. So what are, great what are we to talking have you. about? Absolutely. Yeah. What did I jump into at the moment? Uh -huh. Oh, we we are we are discussing predictable patterns in apps, and so we talked about the phone app and the clock app, both of which have a tabbed uh, view uh, interface. And then we we spent some time on talking about the phone app specifically, and how to deal with the in call controls if you want to add a second call or if you want to mute somebody or uh, press buttons while you're on, uh, you know, an IVR uh, system, automated system, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so do you have anything to uh, say about those? I haven't done it for a long time, but it's the same thing as merge where you hide. Is that, am I right? Where you merge. Oh, absolutely. You we want to merge we talked calls. about that one. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, I I like that uh, feature a lot. Uh, I don't have anything to add because I haven't used it in a while. But uh, uh, I'm doing FaceTime more. Well, you know, FaceTime is great. And uh, when we start the Messages app, which is the very next app we're going to teach, um, we will also cover FaceTime in conjunction with that because... Lynn just brought up that she uses FaceTime more. And I will say that whenever I call another Apple user, I always like to use FaceTime and you don't have to use video. If you're worried about that, you know, sometimes you want to, but sometimes you say, well, maybe, you know, I don't know what I'm, what I'm, what I'm showing a, a, a video of because I don't know, you know, what's, what I'll maybe, did I, you know, did I, uh, forget something that's laying out am i showing something i you know don't yeah, want to right. show um, i'm wearing my pajamas you know <laughs> i do audio <laughs> facetime all the time and um now tell me if this is true matt because in the past we talked about how the um reception is better but i heard oh, it that is. now it's the same is it better or did they it's did still they, it's mm -hmm. still i think it's still a higher quality it has drastically improved with traditional phone calls thanks to um what's called VOLTE or voice over LTE not to be confused with voice over the screen reader but a whole different thing and and that definitely has improved the quality of of regular audio calls if both people have um 
devices that support Volte. Like it's not going to help you if you call a landline or something. But if you call, you know, all the major carriers and, and even some of the smaller ones, um, anybody that uses the networks that that have it, at least in theory, have access to that voice over LTE feature. So that really does help regular calls. But I still think FaceTime and FaceTime audio are just a step up even uh, even from that, they are just, they just sound so good. And I love right. FaceTime and, and yeah, FaceTime audio allows us to not even use the video if we don't want to. So right. we will cover that guys. We're going to, we're going to cover that probably next week. Awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I saw one raised hand already. Um, what if we officially open it up, up to questions now that you have questions about clock, about the phone app, about making calls, receiving calls, doing these other things in calls, Questions about predictable patterns, questions about setting the sleep schedules like we talked about, any of these things, um, or you need to follow up from Monday uh, where we talked about entering contact cards and uh, sharing your contacts and all of these things, uh, let's put up our raised hands, okay? Give you a minute to do that. Yeah. I'm going to feed him. Do I have to take him out front? I wear my slippers out front. Do you want me to, to do this? Oh, it's I up have, to you. I, I, okay. I don't mind I either way. It, it's your choice. For some reason, every time I, well, not every time, but when I, un, sometimes it jumps around and I unmute the wrong person. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I have actually noticed that too. What I typically do is just swipe to the left and to the right to make sure it's the correct person. Because if you look to the left of the controls for that, person it says their name first so that's yeah. what i always do because i have noticed it does that occasionally that's been a very very long-standing thing i i probably just yeah. never brought that up to you guys so sorry about i'll that, just but, double tap um, on a name and then i think it's you know and i even check to make sure it's that person and then i double tap or, or i unmute that person or send them an, un an, <laughs> an unmute message and it's somebody completely different um, well, you know. I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to feed my dog right now and I, I'll, I'll unmute. So you had to unmute me this time, but now you're set to be able to unmute yourself. Yep. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Okay. I am going to unmute, hopefully, James. We think. Um, we think. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, James. I hope I just sent you an unmute. I think you did. You oh, did. there we you did. go. Yes, I oh, perfect. Hallelujah. Per <laughs> perfect. I actually snuck in with like, I, I snuck in with a question last week after Matt had to leave. Um, so I wanted to give, I wanted to hear his opinion on it, but I also wanted to ask, um, did I hear right that, so the, uh, the voiceover in and out for the iPad is already on the, um, on the tech, on the TTJ channel, and I guess next spring is the uh, the Mac. The voiceover for the Mac is on the menu. Um, close, but uh, sorry, it wasn't quite clear. So actually, the iPad uh, course that is on YouTube is technically last season's iPad. Now, even though it was this year, it was yeah. taught under iPad OS fifteen. Next spring, really starting in March we will have a new iPad course that is designed for iPad OS 16. So we do them, you know, every year, uh, you know, and, and, and so there will be one again in the spring. Now the Mac voiceover in and out course is um, actually going to start next month. I will be announcing that by the newsletter here in, in a day or two. Um, and that was um, only, only held because of us not knowing when Ventura, you know, the new Mac OS was going to be released. So now that we know it's, it's actually coming out next week, you know, we'll be starting the, the Mac course in November. And the other thing I would just add to that is just to be clear, the iPad course is a bit different. It is definitely designed for voiceover users. I mean, it's designed for everybody, but obviously I use voiceover and so does the whole team. So we teach to voiceover, but it's, we, we expect that people taking that course kind of already know the basics of voiceover that like we're teaching now and that you want to go further with the iPad. So the iPad is a lot more about 
really getting into the deep, like, you know, how do I create documents in pages? How do I create movies in Apple clips? And how do I, you know, actually use this device in a productive manner now in, and, you know, details about the apps and not as much about, you know, how do I use the rotor? How do I swipe? You know, th those things are going to be used in that iPad course because we are voiceover users, but um, we kind of expect that people who take that are, are ready to go a bit further. Okay. So I wanted to, I wanted to bring up um, something now, Sarah, uh, I think uh, there was another trainer on the call. Um, Sarah tried to take a crack at this last week. I have uh, set up, I've changed the notification display uh, to all three different modes uh, in my settings. And since I upgraded to 16 on my iPhone 12 mini, I cannot, when I, when I tap, um, you know, when I, when I see it, if I'm on the open screen and I catch a notification,